Hey there. Um, today I wanted to I want to show you something that I find really interesting, and I really hope you take a chance with this video before you just click out of it and move on to something else, because this is we're talking about AI and is AI inherently evil? I think AI could easily be you know a powerful tool for the dark side of things, but with that being said, at least for now, at least where we're at at this time period. AI can also be a, a really powerful tool for the Christian side because of the amount of information we are able to get from it. You searches and research that used to take, you know, days or weeks, you know, can be completed in just a couple of sentences on things like chat GPT. But don't get me wrong, you have to use, you know, strong discernment to make sure that, you know, the information you're getting is correct. But what I did today is I, I asked the AI, uh, specifically chat GPT, their newest version. I asked it about Christian persecution, not only in the West, but all around the world. And then I asked it some, you know, another specific question about uh, over in Minnesota, where they are, you know, now doing the Muslim call to prayer. And I was talking about, you know, asking it questions about how Christianity is being pushed aside for, you know, other religions like Islam. And the, the one good thing about this is, it based its it based its responses on the information that it has. Uh, it it's actually pretty informative, and what it has to say about it is um, surprisingly more in agreement with what I believe than what I thought it would come up with. So, so take a few minutes and listen to this, and just see where if you, if you want to look at this from a secular perspective, this is straight up just information that's out there on the web for it to, you know, access to, to answer these questions and look at the answers that comes up with persecution to Christians is so obvious that even the AIs can't deny it. So anyway, take a listen to this and uh, let me know in the comments what you think. The question of whether Christianity is being persecuted or treated differently than other religions is complex and varies depending on the context and region. There are multiple factors at play, including historical, political, and cultural dynamics that influence how different religions are treated in public discourse and by institutions. Let's break down some key points in an open-minded analysis, drawing from both observations and research. 1. Global Persecution of Christians Globally, it is well documented that Christians face significant persecution in many parts of the world, particularly in countries where Christianity is a minority religion. Organizations like Open Doors and the Pew Research Center have consistently reported that Christians are among the most persecuted religious groups worldwide. This persecution includes violence, imprisonment, and even death, especially in countries with authoritarian regimes or where militant groups hold power, such as in parts of the Middle East, North Africa, and Asia. In these places, Christian persecution is not subtle but explicit and brutal. Two. Western Context and Cultural Shifts In the West, particularly in historically Christian-majority nations like the United States or Europe, the dynamic is different. Here, persecution takes on a subtler form, often manifesting in cultural exclusion, ridicule, or legal restrictions that indirectly target Christian beliefs. The decline of Christian cultural dominance in the West has led to growing secularism, where Christianity, once integral to the public sphere, is now more frequently challenged or pushed to the margins of public life. For example, public mockery and ridicule. As you mentioned, Christianity often faces open mockery or derision in popular culture, media, and even on social media. It's common to see comedians, artists, and public figures openly criticize or make fun of Christian beliefs, while similar criticism of other religions, particularly Islam or Judaism, is treated as taboo or even labeled as hate speech. Exclusion from public forums. In some cases, Christian symbols, prayers, or references to God have been removed from public spaces, e.g. schools, government buildings, in an effort to promote secularism or maintain neutrality. However, this has led to feelings among many Christians that their religion is being treated unfairly or differently from other religions. 3. The Minnesota Call to Prayer Example The case of Minnesota allowing the Muslim Adhan call to prayer 
To be broadcast publicly is an interesting example of how different religions are treated in contemporary society. This move, which occurred in some cities like Minneapolis, is often cited as an example of how Islam is given public space and visibility in ways that might not be afforded to Christianity today. While Christian bells still ring from churches, public prayer broadcasting is less common for Christians, except in some rural areas. From one perspective, this may reflect the growing diversity of the U.S. population and an attempt to accommodate the religious practices of minority groups. Many advocates argue that the call to prayer being broadcast is about inclusivity and freedom of religion for all groups, including Muslims, who may otherwise feel marginalized. However, for some Christians, this shift feels like a double standard. They observe that, while secularism limits Christian expressions in public forums, e.g., prayer in schools, it seems more accommodating to the public expressions of minority faiths like Islam. This has led some to argue that Christianity is being disfavored in favor of newer minority religions under the banner of pluralism and inclusivity. For legal and cultural restrictions, Christians have raised concerns about how certain laws and cultural attitudes restrict their ability to openly practice or share their faith. For example, religious freedom versus discrimination laws. In some cases, Christians have been fined or penalized for refusing to participate in events or provide services that conflict with their beliefs, such as in cases involving same-sex marriages. These legal battles highlight the tension between religious freedom and anti-discrimination laws, and Christians often feel that their rights are being eroded in favor of other societal values. Censorship in public discourse Some Christians feel that they are being censored or shut down in public forums when their views, particularly on hot-button issues like marriage, sexuality, or sanctity of life, conflict with mainstream secular values. Social media platforms and academic institutions have been accused of promoting liberal ideologies while stifling conservative Christian perspectives. 5. Support for other religions There is also a perception that other religions, particularly Islam, are receiving more cultural support or protection than Christianity. Islamophobia is a serious issue in many Western countries, and rightly so, efforts have been made to protect Muslim communities from hate and violence. However, Christians sometimes feel that similar efforts are not made to protect their faith, especially when it comes to public mockery or ridicule. Balancing perspective, is Christianity persecuted in the West? It's important to acknowledge that the kind of persecution Christians face in the West is different from the violent persecution seen in other parts of the world. In the West, it is more about cultural marginalization, legal pressures, and societal ridicule rather than physical violence or imprisonment. Some might argue that what Christians face in the West is not persecution in the biblical sense, but rather a shift in cultural power dynamics as society becomes more pluralistic and secular. On the other hand, it's fair to say that Christians are increasingly finding it difficult to publicly live out or share their faith without facing opposition or accusations of being intolerant. This is a growing concern for many believers who see this as a form of soft persecution, where they are being slowly excluded from public life or forced to compromise their beliefs to fit in with secular norms. Biblical Perspective The Bible does warn that believers will face persecution and hostility for their faith, especially as the end times approach. In Matthew 5 verses 11 to 12, Jesus said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This passage speaks to the reality that Christians, in any era, should expect resistance when they faithfully follow Christ. Conclusion To summarize, Christianity in the West is experiencing a form of persecution, though it differs from the violent persecution seen in other parts of the world. Christians in the West are facing cultural and legal challenges that are making it more difficult to publicly live out their faith without facing backlash or censorship. At the same time, other religions, particularly Islam, are being granted more visibility in the name of inclusivity and diversity. The challenge for Christians is to navigate this new landscape while staying faithful to their beliefs and continuing to proclaim the gospel with love and courage. Further research into specific cases and trends may reveal more nuances, but there is certainly a growing sense among Christians that their faith is being treated differently 
if not unfairly, in an increasingly secular and pluralistic society. One, religious freedom protections. Both Muslims and Christians, like all religious groups in the U.S., are protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution, which guarantees the free exercise of religion. This means that, in theory, both groups should be able to practice their faith without interference from government or institutions like schools or businesses. Two, Muslim practices in schools and businesses. In many cases, Muslims are allowed accommodations to practice daily prayers, salah, which occurs five times a day at specific times. Public institutions like schools and private businesses sometimes provide designated spaces for Muslim employees or students to pray or allow them to step aside during break times for these practices. Constitutional grounds. When schools or businesses allow this, they often cite the same First Amendment rights that protect all religious expression, as well as the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which requires reasonable accommodation for religious practices unless it causes undue hardship for the employer or institution. Cultural sensitivity. In many instances, accommodating Muslim prayer is seen as a matter of cultural sensitivity, given that Muslims make up a minority in the U.S., and their practices are more structured and time-sensitive compared to some Christian practices. 3. Perceived double standards for Christians Many Christians feel that they face increasing restrictions when it comes to expressing their faith, particularly in public or professional settings. For example, banned religious apparel. In schools or businesses, Christian-themed apparel, such as t-shirts or hats with Bible verses or Christian symbols, is sometimes restricted under dress codes or policies aimed at preventing religious expression that could be deemed offensive or disruptive. Prayer in public spaces. Public Christian prayer is often seen as controversial, especially in schools where separation of church and state is cited. School-sponsored prayer is prohibited, and in some cases, even voluntary student-led prayers or religious clubs are restricted. This contrast between how Muslim prayer is accommodated and how Christian expression is restricted can feel like a double standard, particularly for Christians who feel that their faith is being pushed out of the public sphere. 4. Understanding the differences in practice One reason why it may seem that Muslims are afforded more freedom is that their religious practices are more visible and structured. Praying five times a day on a mat, fasting during Ramadan, or wearing specific religious clothing, like hijabs, are outward expressions of their faith that require accommodations. Schools and businesses are often responsive to this because denying these practices could be seen as direct violations of religious freedom under the law. By contrast, many Christian practices, such as wearing a t-shirt with a Bible verse or saying a quiet prayer before a meal, are seen as less structured or less urgent, and therefore are more easily dismissed or restricted without being viewed as a violation of rights. This has led to an impression among Christians that their faith is being treated differently, as they are sometimes told to hide their beliefs, while other religious groups are given more visibility. 5. Legal Cases of Christian Restrictions There have been several legal cases where Christians have challenged restrictions on their religious expression in schools and businesses. Apparel Restrictions in some schools, students wearing Christian t-shirts or jewelry have been asked to change or remove them, even if the same restrictions aren't applied to other religious symbols, like the hijab or yarmulke. School prayer. Public school students may face restrictions on leading prayers, starting Bible clubs, or displaying religious messages, whereas other cultural or religious expressions are more freely allowed. 6. Cultural Shifts Toward Secularism Another factor is the cultural shift in many Western societies towards secularism, which often interprets the Establishment Clause, the part of the First Amendment prohibiting the government from establishing a religion, as requiring the removal of Christian symbols and practices from public institutions, especially schools. This has led to instances where even non-religious references to Christianity, like wearing a cross or mentioning Jesus in a class discussion, can be censored, under the belief that it violates the separation of church and state. However, this same principle is not always applied uniformly to other religions. Muslim practices are often treated as cultural accommodations, making it seem as though there is a bias in favor of non-Christian religions. 7. Cultural Sensitivity versus Perceived Persecution 
There's a delicate balance between cultural sensitivity and religious expression. In some cases, accommodations made for Muslim practices are seen as necessary to protect a religious minority. However, Christians may feel persecuted when their faith is pushed aside or treated as a problem in public settings. They may argue that their practices are more integral to American culture and should be protected with the same sensitivity. For example, the practice of Christian prayer has deep roots in American history, yet many schools have removed any Christian references while allowing accommodations for other religious practices like Muslim prayer or holidays. 8. Conclusion While both Muslims and Christians are constitutionally protected in their religious expression, the perception that Muslims are allowed more freedom than Christians in schools and businesses stems from how different religious practices are treated. Muslim prayer and other religious obligations often receive accommodations, while Christian expressions, such as religious apparel, public prayer, or the display of symbols, are sometimes restricted under the guise of maintaining neutrality or preventing offense. Ultimately, the tension between secularism and religious freedom plays a significant role in shaping how each faith is treated in public spaces. Christians who feel that their faith is being marginalized point to these disparities as evidence of an unfair double standard. However, this issue also highlights the challenges of ensuring religious freedom in an increasingly pluralistic and secular society.